All right, guys, it's time to mix. This process is very, very important because at this stage in the game, you have to remember one thing. The better your mix, the better your master. The job that we do now is going to greatly determine what the final outcome of this piece is going to be. While typically you are going to be planning to send this to a mastering engineer, the reality is too often people rely on mastering engineers to fix problems that really should have been corrected at the mix level. So it's very important that we try to identify all of those problems first before you send it off to a mastering engineer or before you do the mastering yourself. The point is to fix the problem so that you don't have to try to become so hyper-surgical in the mastering stage because at that point it becomes much more difficult to actually correct those issues. So good mix equals good master. So that's the goal for today. We're going to turn this guy into a beautiful shining star, make it as elegant and sophisticated as possible so that the mastering engineer will be able to make your beautiful track shine even brighter. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually prepare this session for a export into a new session. We're basically going to create a new Ableton session that's gonna be dedicated to just doing the mix down. So we're separating this process into two parts. We have the, well, technically three parts actually. We have the creation phase, then we have the mix phase, and then we have the mastering phase. And it's, in my opinion, it's important to separate these phases. Some people will do them all in one session. Um, but I personally think that it's much better for a multitude of reasons to split them up. Um, even if you are doing the mixing and mastering yourself, actually, especially if you're doing the mixing and the mastering yourself, I think it's important that you split up these stages so that you really put on three separate hats. Part of the reason why people send their uh, tracks to mixing engineers and mastering engineers is so that people can take a look at their tracks from a sort of uh, objective point of view, not emotionally involved in the track, not, um, you know, didn't have a hand in making it. And they can really just listen to the acoustics of your track and make, you know, educated decisions in terms of what will help your track shine the brightest that it possibly can. So if you're going to be doing that yourself, uh, I think, it's definitely, it's three different hats, it's three different mentalities, and so splitting them up, creating new sessions for each stage will help you do a better job and execute um, the basically what's the job of three people as one person. So basically, the thing to keep in mind as we delve into this and prepare it for export is that once we get to the mix phase, and then especially once we get to the mastering phase, um, any potential problems that are in those later stages um, that could have been solved here in this stage where we're still in the original multi-track uh, recording, it's going to be much more difficult to try to fix those problems later. So it's always good to really make sure you've gone through this, listen to it over and over and over again, go through it with a fine tooth comb, and really make sure that you're prepared to progress to the next level at an appropriate time and try not to rush that process because it's very difficult to go back. Um, it's You can always take a little extra time. You can always sit on it for another day. You can always listen to it on another sound system, listen to it in the car, listen to it at the club, listen to it at your friend's house, listen to it on you know, an iPod, headphones, um, et cetera, et cetera. You know, take the time to really feel confident that what you're doing uh, and the decisions that you've made are decisions that you stand behind. So once you feel confident, boom, you can come to the phase where we are now, which is the mix phase. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to export these tracks and create this new session as we've talked about. So um, basically at this point, um, we should feel conf confident that everything's good and solid. So I'm just going to show you guys how to do one of these tracks, and then I'll do the rest of them offline uh, just for the sake of time here. So um, the cool thing is because we already split these up into groups, kind of our work is a little bit already done for us. Um, what I generally recommend for folks is to have no more than eight groups for your final master. 
So basically, here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that's perfect. So um, we even have one left over if we want to put our sends out on an individual uh, bus or an individual mix down as well. So a lot of people like to separate the effects. So you have seven channels dry, you still bring the effects in, but you bring them in as a separate track so that you have the ability to make changes to them if you uh, wish to. So this is actually set up perfectly. Um, so this will be really easy. So first thing I'm gonna do is just set up my loop. I'm gonna go here, uh, all the way out to the end. There's probably going to be a little bit of tail here, but we're going to go ahead and just worry about that. Well, I'll give it a little bit of extra, but we're going to basically just do a fade out anyway at the uh, at the mix phase. So we've got the hat group. Cool. Uh, everything's here, and we've gone ahead and made a loop. And it's always good to click the loop so you get that selection, so Ableton knows that it's only going to export what's selected here. So now I'm going to go File and I'm going to go to Export Audio Video, which is, which is Shift-Command-R. So we'll go ahead and click that. Okay, so if you really want to do this properly, um, you should really set your bit depth at 32 bits. The reality is, I know that seems maybe a little bit high, and it's going to take up a lot of room um, in terms of file size, but the reality is everything you do in Ableton is 32-bit. Um, by default, once you import audio into Ableton, it starts working at 32-bit. So um, if you export at a lower bit rate, either 16-bit or 24-bit, you're basically forcing it to do some kind of dither, which, by the way, uh, I'm going to turn this off. I don't want dither to be on at this stage of the process. So um, go wave. We're going to do 44, 32. Sorry. The reason why dither was deactivated is because at 32-bit, dithers it's not dithering, right? You cannot dither at 32-bit because basically dithering is quantizing down. It's 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 basically a form of compression. So it's getting rid of unnecessary information. It's trying to make um, your bits and bytes nice and tidy. Uh, however, what that means is that you can get possibly some artifacting, some aliasing, some noise in your file. Um, for a fact, you do not want to dither ever more than once. And the only time you want to dither is when you do the final, final mastering. You never want to re-dither your file multiple times because that's definitely going to increase your chance of noise and problems. So um, if we keep our bit depth at 32, then dithering isn't even an option. It's not relevant because there's none of that is taking place at all. So we're basically keeping everything at a lossless format. So you definitely want to send your files to a mixing engineer in a lossless format. Or if you're doing the mixing yourself, as we're going to do here today, you want to keep it lossless. So 44, 32, we'll keep it wave. We're going to render out the master. That's fine. This is soloed. I'm going to actually... I'm going to deactivate the reverbs here, so that way we can get those on a separate ch uh, channel. So at the end, basically what I'll do is I'll just solo the reverb channels and export them as well. So I'm going to go here, Shift-Command-R. Great, so master, it's going to do the length of the loop, which we've set. Renderer's loop, no. Uh, file type wave, 44, 32, no dithering. Great, create analysis file. Don't need it. Normalize, definitely not. Convert to mono, definitely not. Definitely not uploading to SoundCloud, and there's no video. So there we go. Those are the export options. Go ahead and hit export. It's going to ask you where you want to export it to. So we'll just go here, uh, and I'll put it under this class. So make a new folder called uh, demo stems. Great. And then I'll go ahead and label everything appropriately. So this was the hat group. Beautiful. So I'll hit save, and now it's going to go ahead and export. So basically, as I said, for the sake of time, it's going to take me a few minutes here to go through and export all of these. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, catch up with you guys once the export has completed. All right, so I've opened up a blank session here. I'm going to go ahead and just delete these tracks, and we'll command T to create a audio tracks. And for the sake of simplicity here, I'm just going to go ahead and add this to the browser. So now we've got our stems here. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Beautiful. So all eight of our stems. And if we go over here back to the arrangement view, can just close all these bad boys real quick and then command A to select all. Now you'll notice if I first just um, bring these over, it wants to put all of them back to back on the same track. However, if you hold command, there we go. Now we have the option to give each sound its own track, which is what we want. And then if we go ahead and open these up, we can see all the parts. See, and now the reason why we export everything the same amount of length is so that all the parts line up. Also, it would behoove us to make the session uh, tempo the same tempo as our original song tempo, which happened to be 130 beats per minute. And then the other thing here, if I just click one of these and then uh, here, double click here, command A to select all of our audio. So just make sure that warp is off. You definitely don't want warp on. You run the risk of uh, degrading your audio signal if you accidentally had the wrong BPM set. So now, uh, basically, our bars and beats up here will line up with the audio. So uh, give a quick check, just make sure. Great, everything sounds good. Uh, would also be useful to just go through and name all of our tracks. So I'm gonna do that here real quick. Uh, for the sake of time, I'll spare you. Okay, awesome. So we've gone and just named all of the, uh, the tracks here so that we know exactly what everything is. So pay close attention here. There's something that I want you guys to notice. See how much headroom I have? There's a lot of headroom here. Everything has plenty of room. At this stage of the process, this is very important. Um, I see a lot of people give me uh, tracks or give you know mastering or mixing engineer folks tracks that are just already just absolutely squashed. I mean, they look like you know like that. Um, if your track looks like that when you're in the mix phase, you have no headroom. You know, there's nothing to work with really. So it's important that you make sure that you have plenty of headroom at this uh, stage of the process. When you get to mastering, you're gonna go ahead and you know make sure that it gets plenty loud. But at this point, we really just wanna make sure that the mix is nice and dynamic, that everything's working really well together, and we have achieved basically what I call uh, the divine balance. And the divine balance is when you can hear every single sound perfectly and every single instrument has its place and it fits harmoniously with every other single instrument in your session. This divine balance is so, so important to making sure that your track will sound professional and will translate across sound systems and be really well received by people worldwide when they hear your, your music.